Welcome to the Tarzan Show. Today we are going to be going to the grocery store to pick up some fruits and vegetables for my animals and some meat for my carnivorous animals. I buy food every week, sometimes twice a week, um, whether it's vegetables, fruits, meats, uh, fish, anything you know my animals need to survive in captivity. Um, I kind of spoil them a lot. So today we're gonna go through, and we're gonna go grocery shopping, and then we're gonna go home, and I'm gonna name every single animal I have, tell you their background, their story, their history. We're gonna hang out with them, and we're gonna eat with them. So we're going to the fresh produce section. Papaya. So I come through, and I get a wide variety of fruits, veggies, and greens. Um, a lot of people feed their animals lettuce. Lettuce has no nutritional value in it, really, at all. When you have iguanas or uh, vegetarian-like animals, omnivores, herbivores, you wanna feed them kale, collard greens, uh, super fruits, spinach, uh, stuff that has a lot of nutritional value inside of it. Not enough to feed everybody happily. I'm gonna feed my boy something a little different today. He always gets spoiled with chicken and rats. But this one's from my boy Yoshi. Yoshi is an Asian water monitor. So we got some, some octopus, we got some calamari, we got two whole snappers. Um, they eat anything meat wise, but they like to give them treats. So this is more of a being such a good boy. I always give him like whole fish, a whole chicken with the bone in, party ball. I give them rats, I give them chicks. I know some of you guys are like, oh my God, that's so mean, but that's what they eat in the wild. Whatever they can catch, they can eat. They eat turtles, they eat other lizards, they eat snakes, they eat uh, birds, they eat fish. So I give them everything that I can possibly get my hands on to feed him, I give to him. And I think that's about it, fellas. So now we head home. Now, so say what Hey, up. for the vlog, Miami Shores, the hey. real Tarzan. Yeah. Hey, let's do it, homie. Hey. get our bowls. One bowl for the tortoise, one bowl for the iguanas. Small rhino iguana, regular green iguana, half for albino. So first, I take these kale, collard greens, a lot of vitamin A, C, and K inside of here, and uh, same as over here. Good nutrition, uh, good for the animals. So here we got papayas. Papayas are uh, Tropical fruit from Mexico, Central America, some parts of uh, the other tropical regions as well too. Now you open it up and what do you see? Ooh la la, that's the good stuff. So usually I take one papaya and I cut it in half. And then I cut the other half in half into a quarter. Just like that for my tortoises. Boom. Now I take this guy right here for my rhino iguanas and I make shavings for them. Of course, there are little seeds in there. And I like nice, thin, small pieces. I can cut up like that. That's good. Not for him. Some strawberries. You don't gotta cut them up mainly, just for the smaller ones. They like fruit to be cut up a little bit. The big ones you can just dump them in there. Is it easy? My favorite. These are grapes. And they're all for me. Yeah, you understand. Cut a piece of broccoli out. They love whole pieces like the melons and the fruits. Stuff like that. Now we take some bananas. Two 
always go inside with the rhinos. And then boy, small rhino iguana, splits it with the other. With the blueberries, trinkling the blueberries. Hello, yours. And yours. And yours. Multivitamin. Extra vitamin for my babies. Take a little bit, sprinkle it through. Sprinkle it through. A little bit, sprinkle it through. This lizard, his name is Bubba Rex. Bubba Rex is a rhino iguana. They come from Dominican Republic. Cyclorus species. He's my best friend. Cool story about this guy. My boss has iguanas, rhino iguanas, for like 20 something years, long as I've been alive. And they had babies. And he sold all the babies to his friends and customers. And everybody wanted a baby from this rhino iguana because he didn't have babies for years. And then out of nowhere, he says, yo, Mike, I got you a present. He gives me the rhino iguana. I didn't even ask for it. The guy was the best thing that's happened in my life in the past couple of years. I used to go to school shows with him. I used to do photos with him. He used to sit on my lap every day at work. Dude, he's the best lizard I've ever had in my life. So you guys come meet Bubba Rex. Rex, ready to eat, boy? What do you got for you? I got you your favorite grapes. See? This is about two and a half years old, going on three. Uh, Rex will be anywhere from three to four feet long. Um, this is my dog, Shuggy. If you haven't seen him, he's licking my elbow. Give me a kiss. Thank you, sir. And there Rex goes to eat his food. So yeah, as you guys see, I put all of Rex's greens on top, so all his favorite treats on the bottom. So now I'm gonna go through, like I do every single morning, and sometimes twice a day. I get my water hose, I come out here, and I spray every one of them down. So we're gonna start all the way at the bottom down here and see our tortoises. Their names are Wren and Stimpy. They are red foot tortoises from uh, South America. They're outside year round. Rain, there's no snow. Um, they have shelters, they go inside these burrows, they dig inside this tree, which they do in the wild, and um, they love it. And soon I'll be able to extend this whole thing over here once I get some more wood. So I spray them down, we walk over here, my rhinos, so I stick back here. This is where she uh, gets away from everybody. Um, her little box down here, she got bedding. And I come through here and I spray it down. Thanks for coming for her. All the way. And then sometimes they poop a lot on top up here. So I tighten the water hose and I spray the poop down off the top. You want to stain, you know? Take your bowls, I flip them, dump all the water out. Spray it down. He's acting pretty shy today because he's not, he don't like the camera that much. Now the cool thing about raising animals is you guys see my dog over here, right? Raise him around Bubba Rex inside the house. Um, he's really good with animals, so it doesn't bother him. They get along really well. He knows he means no harm. Hey, be easy, buddy. Hey, easy. He's gonna beat you up. Leave her alone. So you got Ren and Stimpy, Ghost, and Angie. And my boy Yoshi. That's where all the fun begins. Squid. This is octopus. And you got your red snappers. Now, he was he's all the way over there. And watch this. That tongue that's coming out. He smells non-stop. Like, oh, I smell fish. I smell something that dad got over there. I want some of that. So here he comes. Mmm. I got you a whole buffet, buddy, all right? So, and you dropped it. It's okay, I got another one. I almost got smacked in the face. So, he's really sweet, but he hates fast movements. So, if you ever come across a monitor, now he's kind of nervous, he, he don't know who Theo is like that. You got these cameras around, watch him slide down, and watch your face, Theo, because he will slap right in the face. So 
So now I'm cutting it near a thinner piece. That is me. It's that. I know we got cameras out and stuff, but you gotta be nice today, okay? Here, you almost smacked me in the face. Look, I got a smaller piece for you. So he knows when he sees food that some pieces are bigger than he can actually swallow. He'll definitely try it, but I cut the head off the fish and he ate the head. That's a sulfur Asian water monitor. It's about almost six feet long. They can get eight to 10 feet, depending on the subspecies. Um, they come in melanistic forms like black dragons. They're a close relative to the Komodo dragon. Um, that tongue they have that flickers out like that, they use that for monitoring. That's what they call it, Asian water monitor. It's from Asia, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Jakarta, different subspecies and different islands have different colors, traits, and stripes, and spots, and you know, stuff like that. Guys like this, I haven't picked them up in a couple weeks. I try to come over here, pin his head down. Look how big he is. He's about a little over 10 feet. I'm um, gonna make sure his mouth is good. Now, this guy was a rescue. He was not a, someone's pet. He's uh, recovering, he's shedding out bad. He's super aggressive, but it doesn't bother me at all. I come out, I peel the skin off, make sure he's nice and hydrated. He doesn't have any problems with them. And uh, check his mouth, open his mouth up. Make sure his teeth are nice and, see his teeth down there, boy? That's no joke. Now when I got him, he was in really bad condition because he's been sitting in a small cage for months. So I take him, just examine him once every couple months. He's really hands off, put him back in his cage. Just like that. And that's checking his mouth for like any infections he may have or he may grow over being outside. Um, the food he eats. But other than that, he has a nice big caution sign. Some people come over and they want to stick their hands in their cages. You were warned. Flames, AKA Mr. Scorpion and Sub-Zero. This is one of my favorites. He's definitely, hey, 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 calm down, buddy. Calm down, it's dad. Dad doesn't want to hurt you. Dad feeds you, dad gives you, yeah, it's me. So we're gonna let him go back inside of his cage. He's uh, not the nicest guy, as I said already. And before I start giving him food, every couple days I come out and I take out all the old greenery that I put in there a couple days ago. So I keep my lawn in check. I scrape out all the dirty stuff that I don't need. I give them all fresh greenery from around the yard. Cool thing about these plants, see it right there, it's like a straw. That's how it filter water. When water goes through the ground, through the roots, they come through and they go through these little holes. But another cool thing, if you were dying or in a canal somewhere, you had to have a fresh water system, you find a tree like this, uh, leaves, cut it out, and these holes can be used as straws to filter dirty water to clean water. If you didn't know, now you know. Overlap this one like that. I know you're thinking it's a bit much, but the more camouflage, the more security, the more he feels comfortable and at home, the better. So after seeing the snakes, the lizards, the tortoises, the dog, here's my last and final one for you guys. We got a fox. You ever see that story with the fox and the hound? You guys ever see how pit bulls are so vicious and evil? Okay. It's all about how you raise them. So meet my boy Shuggy and my girl Foxy Brown. They're best friends. The fox actually always beats him up all the time. Hey, easy buddy. To make a movie independent Woo! Need new trucks independent Woo! I need you to listen to the vision Woo! All your verses sound like dirty dishes 
I'm about to clean them in the kitchen. Woo! And we making money by the minute. Woo! Thanks for tuning in. See you guys next time on the next episode of The Real Tarzan. Peace.